What's up everybody, this is Danny, and today we're gonna compare the Apple AirTag versus the Samsung SmartTag Plus. These were just released, not to be confused with the original SmartTag. These new ones have precision finding with ultra wideband technology, and you can even use AR to help you out. So we'll see how it compares to Apple's. And we'll also throw in Tau since you can use these on iOS or Android. First, let's get this out of the way. If you wanna use Apple AirTags, then you're gonna need an iOS device of some sort, an iPad or an iPhone. And if you wanna use Samsung SmartTag Plus, then you're also gonna need a Galaxy device or tablet running Android 8.0 and up. But with Tile, you can use it on both platforms, which is nice, especially if you own multiple devices. Pricing is surprising this time around because Apple came in competitive. The AirTags come in a single pack, which is $29, and then you can get a four pack for $99. Out of them all, they are the most customizable as well. Even though they only come in white, you can get them personalized with initials, emojis, or a combo of them. You can only imagine who this one with the poop emoji is for. The smart tag from Samsung is a dollar more at $30, but the plus version with precision tracking is $40. Tile's pricing varies on what you get. They vary from $20 on sale to the smallest of the bunch, the sticker here, which costs $40 but they have a ton of different packs like this one where you can get a variety of trackers. I like this one because it can fit in a wallet easily. If you wanna compare the size and design of Apple's and Samsung's trackers, they are both compact, but the Apple AirTag is smaller. There's a matte finish on the SmartTag and SmartTag Plus, which is nice. And there's a physical button clickable, which has multiple functions, which I will show you later. There's a small cutout on the back, which I presume is there to help out the audio. And it also has a cutout where you don't need an accessory to attach it to something. And it's the same with most of the towel trackers as well. The AirTag has a glossy white finish with shiny polished stainless steel on the back. No visible speakers, but Apple is doing something a little different for sound. And the only way to attach it to something is through an accessory like this super fresh rugged armor from the channel sponsor Spigen. And man, this looks good. This is the perfect combo of rugged but done with class. I love the subtle hits of the carbon fiber accent. It's just enough. Attached to that is a beautifully finished metal carabiner with that key holder design, which makes it useful and easy to remove. And the best thing is that you'll always have a bottle opener with you. Perfect everyday carry combo, in my opinion. I also have the new Spigen Valentinus with the new vegan leather on it. It feels very nice. It's classy, so I think a lot of people will like this as well. Spigen had me ready before the AirTags came out. I can always count on them to be one of the first. They've been my go-to for years. They have a few new AirTag accessories coming out too. I'm really excited about the silicone fit because these will be able to be attached to anything. And the Wallet S, this is perfect for me because I'm always losing my wallet. So I'm gonna leave everything linked down below for you. With the popularity of AirTags, I'm sure we'll see a ton of accessories in the future. And that's also something to consider because the more popular the tracker is, the bigger the chance that you'll be able to find something that represents your style. Setting them up is really easy on all of them, very similar. Apple's AirTags are probably the easiest. When you take the wrapper off, you can see that it's attached. When you pull it, it connects the replaceable battery inside and iOS just does the rest, just as you would expect with Apple, and it works with the Find My app. The Samsung SmartTag and SmartTag Plus also super easy to set up. You just push the button and the software takes care of the rest. The only difference I saw that it does a software update before you start using it, and it works through the SmartThings Find app. The Tile app can be used on iOS or Android, so you don't have to worry about compatibility. The setup is also super easy. Basically the same thing, the software steps you through it and you will be up and running in no time. The one thing that might put you off is that to get additional functionality, you have to pay a subscription fee of $2.99 a month or $30 a year to get smart alerts and a 30 day location history. They even have a protect plan that reimburses you up to $1,000 per year for $100 per year. But I do wanna clear things up. You do not have to have a subscription on Tile to get the core functionalities to work, but these other two trackers do not have any type of subscription model whatsoever. Before we go out and test them, let's do a quick sound test so you can hear the speakers on these. Let's start with the Apple AirTag first. You can see it just progressively gets louder. It's a little bit different than the other two. I'm gonna do the tile next, but it depends on the tracker that you have. It could sound a little bit different, but I wanna give you an idea. Okay, so next we're gonna do the SmartTag Plus. 
Okay, off the bat, that's so much louder. So the winner when it comes to sound, SmartTag Plus. So what I wanna do is I wanna test the performance of these trackers, kinda of simulate what it's like if you were to lose an item with one of these trackers attached. There is a farmer's market going on right now. It is really early morning, but there's plenty of traffic through this alleyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the trackers in that plant pot over there and see how long it takes to ping these devices and see which one's gonna be the fastest. All right, so here is an example of nearby find. You can see that the plant pot is right over there and the Samsung is actually detecting a connection while the iPhone is not. So let's go closer to it. Still nothing from the iPhone yet, which is really, really weird, but it is behind that plant over there. Let's take a look. And there it goes, the iPhone connected. And here is find using the camera. Let's try this out on the Samsung and you'll see what I mean. Just move around so it can get a location and it should show me it right there in the pot. Look at that, look at how cool that is. Before I give you the results, let me tell you the differences about how these items are located. So Tile uses other Tile devices and people that have the Tile app on their smartphones or devices to help locate. But I think Apple and Samsung have a big advantage because they're using their smartphones and tablets to help locate. So imagine all of those Galaxy devices out there, all of those iPhones out there, it should be much faster with these two. So after I hit these trackers, I went down the street about two to three miles to charge my car. And then I set these to loss mode. And I was really surprised they were found almost immediately. If you look at the Samsung phone, it showed you that there were many Galaxy devices nearby. And with the iPhone, it doesn't show that, but you can see that they were found approximately at the same time. The reason why it says 12 or 13 minutes ago is because I didn't know what I was looking for and I was just messing around and then I realized, oh, these were found 13 minutes ago. So literally they were found probably within the minute. Tile was really interesting because if you look up at the top here, you can see how long it's been since it's reconnected. And when I set it to loss, I just expected it to take forever, so I didn't recheck it. But when I looked right after I looked at the other two devices, it says that it was updated 38 minutes ago, which means that the Tile network already located this prior to me even putting this in loss mode. So that's pretty impressive. Now all this is going to be location dependent because when I first set my tile to lost, it said that I had over 600 tile devices around me. So that could definitely vary where you live. Now, if you're in a crowded area, this test is going to be pretty accurate, but it all depends on your situation. Because what if you left your backpack in the woods and you're a fisherman, you're not going to be able to ping it this fast. But think about this. If another person was to come across that backpack in the woods, there's a high chance that they're gonna either have an iPhone or a Galaxy device in their pocket. So you're gonna have a higher probability of finding that instead of tile. So that's something that you should keep in mind. Here's something interesting that I found during testing. If you turn off Bluetooth, of course, you cannot nearby find tile because it's Bluetooth dependent. But with the iPhone 12 Pro Max that I'm using right now, if you turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you can still nearby find, it still works. But on the Galaxy S21 Ultra, check this out. If I turn off Bluetooth and I turn off mobile data, then it says that I'm connected, but as soon as I go back in, it won't let me because without a network connection, I cannot connect to the smart tags. Now, if I go and turn on Bluetooth, I thought that this would make it work again, but nope, no network connection, I cannot get in to the smart tag. So that's something you need to keep in mind and hopefully they fix this with the software update. You turn on that mobile data, connected. There are also a couple of other differences that I wanna talk about. First is the tracker finding your phone. So with Tile and Samsung, if you click on these physical buttons, you will be able to locate your phone. But with the AirTags, there's no way to do this. And that could be just because there are no buttons or anything. So I don't know how Apple will figure this out or if it's important to them, but I would like to see this feature come to the AirTags eventually. Now, the one feature that I think that sets apart the Samsung SmartTag Plus and SmartTag is the automation that's available with the physical button for smart home. 
The button clicks can be mapped for automations to control your smart home, which is awesome. It's all in the menu here for a single press and one for held because remember pushing it twice is what activates you finding your phone. So I think this justifies that additional $10 premium over the other trackers. So if you want to turn off your TV before you want to leave, you can do that. Turn off your lights. And let's say that this is on your child's backpack and when they come home from school, then they can click on this and then it will send you a text message to tell you that they arrived home safely. And what's awesome is you can trigger full smart home scenes as well as good night and good morning. So I really like the potential of the extra functionality that's in the smart tag plus, but I guess the only downside is that your smart home products have to be smart things compatible, or you have to have a smart things hub or be in the smart things ecosystem. In terms of safety, I really do like the way that the air tags work because if you have one of these and they're following you or somebody throws one in your car, then it will let you know that an air tag is moving with you. It's not perfect because it does wait until you get home or go to a spot that you're in frequently to let you know that's happening because you have to think about how many air tags are out there and how many people are walking next to you. Can you imagine the notifications that you would get on your phone? But it's nice to know that it will notify you if there is a foreign air tag with you. And if you find one, you can just remove the battery and disable it. And it's also nice to know that if your AirTag is in loss mode, then the NFC will work across iOS and Android. So they can tap it to the back of their phone, get your phone number and call you and help you retrieve that lost item. So in the end, I just wanted to show you that all three of these products work really well. And if you lose a product with one of these attached, there's a high chance that you're definitely gonna find it. With Apple, I expected it to work well, and it definitely does. With precision tracking, especially indoors, I felt it to be the most consistent, where with Samsung, sometimes when you have a case on, it doesn't work as well, and it depends on how you hold the phone because it wants your back up like this. So if you have your phone like this, it doesn't work. It tells you that in the software, but with Apple, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. But the Samsung Smart Tag Plus definitely impressed me because it has the louder speaker. It gets pinged about at the same time. It has that extra smart home functionality. And with that AR camera find, that's also pretty cool when it works. So I think Samsung definitely did a great job here as well. So let me know which one that you like more in the comment section below. I think all three of them are good but I'm gonna favor the Samsung and Apple here. So let me know in the comments what you thought. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one.